All right, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Teresa Verrigan. Um, I'm here with my colleagues to talk about the power of shared resources. Um, so the USPTO actually has two teams that are running in Drupal. Um, they are separate teams, but they do share resources. And so today we're going to take you on a deep dive into how both of those teams migrated a blog into Drupal. We'll go over the design process, the migration effort, touch on some of the key enhancements that we made in Drupal, and then we will, um, again, speak to the challenges and how we overcame the um, sharing those resources through such a large effort. So I'll go ahead and start. I'm, again, Teresa Verrigan. Um, I was the product owner of the public-facing website at the time of this project. Um, the public website's main mission is to educate the public about intellectual property and um, help direct them to those transactional tools where they can register for a trademark, apply for a patent, that sort of thing. The website gets about 69 million views a year. It has about from 13 million users and it's actually only 10% of the larger digital space for the agency. So it is sort of our front door where we direct them to this much larger area of, of uh, transactional systems. Uh, the public website is running on Drupal 10 and has about 200 Drupal authors. Um, so we are, they are constantly busy pushing out changes on a daily basis. And um, we work with the IT department um, oh, I, sh I should mention, I'm with the communication department. We kind of um, dictate the strategy of the website, um, but we work very closely with our IT counterparts who help keep it operational. So again, it's a very collaborative environment. And I'm Lauren Emanuel. I'm the product owner for the internet for the USPTO. It's called PTO Web. Um, I'm also the team lead for the team that's responsible for the content that goes on the homepage, which is what you see here. Uh, we actually launched that homepage in 2022 in Drupal. Um, I've been at the agency for about five years, and throughout that time, we've been working to transition from largely hand-edited HTML pages into Drupal. Uh, so that's been the focus uh, for the last few years, and the homepage was the first thing that we launched. So we have a couple goals. Um, well, we have several goals, but the few that will be the target today, um, one is to inspire pride about our work, and the other really is employee engagement. So that's something that we focused on a lot throughout uh, the director's blog, which you'll hear about today. And when we launched, just for some context too, when we launched this page, we had about four Drupal authors, and they were all within the communications office. I was one of them. And as of this month, we now have 51 across the agency. So we're growing regularly. Uh, back to you. Okay, and my name is Hino Kukre, and I'm one of the developers on the contract side. So ACIC is a prime. ACIC supports 27 Agile teams across seven different USPTO products. And this one is a modernization and ONM contract to support the public and intranet teams. Each has its own product owner, and then there are various roles that support them. The technical needs, Drupal developers, and Agile team support are dedicated to each team. And then the UI, UX, IA, ONM, and cybersecurity are shared across the teams. And we think this has worked really well, uh, but I'll pass it to Lauren to talk about some of the challenges. Yeah, so of course there are some challenges with having shared resources. Um, the first, splitting time causes strain, not only for the teams as a whole, but also the individual resources. It's hard to focus um, when you're constantly having a context switch between totally different things. Um, there are times where large, technical efforts can cause developers to switch between teams. So some examples would be when we upgraded to Drupal 10 or migrated to the cloud. Um, and even with PTO Web, when we were getting that initial launch right in 2022, uh, we needed some more help. So Hanoff was actually one of the people that came over from the public side and helped with PTO Web. Um, but that caused a strain for the other team. And then we're always you're balancing those end user enhancements with the technical requirements. So again, Drupal 10, cloud migration, when those things are happening, really not much else can go on because we're limited with, with the amount of resources. And similarly, we may have to adjust our plan. So if we have something in the roadmap for later and we realize that resource availability is going to change, we might move that up, which you'll hear about today too. 
So what you see here, uh, we have the on the left, the director's corner. That is the internal director's blog. Uh, this is what it looked like before we did our upgrade. And that was in SharePoint. And then over on the right, we have the external director's blog. And that was in Roller, which Teresa will talk more about. Uh, but a few things to keep in mind. The goal of the director's blog really is to hear from the USPTO director uh, to each audience. So obviously, employees is the target audience for the internal side and the general public for the public website. And it's really a chance for everyone to hear what's going on at the USPTO, what's, what are our latest initiatives, what can we be excited about. Um, and what we've done recently through this project, too, is I should say before, we would just cross post. So anything that went on the public side, we would just post again internally on the director's corner. There wasn't really that segmentation between audiences. And now, um, as you'll see through the design and how we really started working together to make the products a little more separate, ironically, um, we've really focused on having blogs dedicated for employees and having blogs dedicated for the general public. Yeah, and um, just a little something else to add about the external side. I don't know if anyone's ever used Roller, but um, we have heard for years from the Roller authors that they've wanted to move into Drupal. It's, you know, it's a very basic platform. It was not user friendly. It did not have a lot of features. And so this was something that we've known that we've had, this is something we've known we wanted to get to. But again, all of those technical enhancements um, just kind of kept pushing it down in our backlog. You know, and we, and it, you'll see when we get into the process, it does require a lot of thought up front. And so and we had to wait until we had the time to do that thinking um, before we could start. So the motivations are basically the same for both. We wanted to improve the uh, authoring interface for the authors with the use of CK Editor 5 and the customizations around that, the uh, content moderation, media library, and in review. We wanted to give the authors tools to create accessible and accurate content. Uh, we also have a couple of features that we added to our Drupal system uh, for better ACL. Uh, control as well as detail tracking. So that helps us improve the content over time. On the internal side, there is one additional feature that was added to increase uh, user engagement, which is the comments. And on the public side, um, as Teresa mentioned, we've been using a high share roller. It has been good to us. It's a stable system that was there for a decade, um, but we had to do extra work over time to copy over some of the design to a different template system. And so retiring that now allows us to decrease the cost of maintenance. All right, um, so now we're gonna dive into migrating from Roller to Drupal. So again, I mentioned that there was like a lot of thought that had to go in at the beginning of this process. Um, we started with the design process and this involved um, utilizing one of our shared resources who was a UX designer. Um, and so um, she had been committed to PTO Web launching for a while. She was their only um, UX resource. And so that took, that took precedent over a refresh of the blog. Um, when PTO Web got a second UX resource, then we were able to take some of her time back. And so um, this started with about a two to three month period where she was embedded with the blog team. She was working directly with the stakeholders to talk about the requirements. She was doing the research on existing blogs and coming up with what those, um, what we wanted the new blog to look like. We didn't just want it to be a complete copy. We wanted to push out enhancements if we were already doing this work. Um, so again, the developers, we were busy migrating to Drupal 10. She was uh, working on her own with the stakeholders through this initial design process. Um, she also, the next stage of the process was ideating solutions. So she started by um, creating some low fidelity uh, wireframes that you see on screen. Um, she came up with a few different rounds of these and she would present them back and it's very collaborative. At this stage, she's sharing them back to the developers, making sure that everything that she's thinking up can be done in the Drupal system that we've built and um, then refining what she has created. 
Um, when she was ready to go into the high fidelity wireframes, um, then you know there there was more engagement. Um, we were she would start demoing these concepts. We would talk through um, you know what would work. She'd refine them for us. And uh, when she was finally able to deliver um, the final mockups, they came with very detailed specifications that you can see on screen here. Again, um, this was a this was definitely. Uh, one of the things that really helped out the developers because when um, when they were ready to work on it, everything was ready to go. Most of the work was done. They just had to copy over what she had already um, spelled out for them very clearly. So again, detailed specifications, definitely a plus. Um, and of course, her role didn't end there. Um, after she delivered the files, um, she was starting. She started attending those daily Scrum meetings. So as the developers started demoing their progress, she was there to give live feedback, address comments, make, and we were able to again do a very collaborative um, development so that she was there. And again, it just kind of really helped when she was able to embed on the team. Some of the key enhancements that we rolled out with this move to Drupal. And again, you can see the live site at uspto.gov backslash blog. Um, the new design was improved readability. Again, this is um, upgrading to our, um, our design library that the rest of the website um, uses. She also built in mobile and tablet views for the blog. So she, um, adding in that mobile responsiveness. And of course, um, improved readability, the text was larger, um, the line height was um, greater, that sort of thing. Uh, one of the really nice enhancements was an automatically generated landing page. Um, this was something that had to manually be updated before, and now as new posts are um, published in Drupal, they moved into the landing page. So there's really no maintenance of the landing page at all, which is really nice. The blog team can really just focus on pushing out the new content and um, the landing page um, updates with it. Um, we also added a more prominent subscription form so that people can easily subscribe to the email and get notified when new blogs come out. Um, we also did better promotion of related posts. So we reviewed the topics that each blog, um, that we were using for each blog, and so each of the related posts, you're able to click on that topic and see additional, additional ones that relate to the same area. Um, each blog has related posts at the bottom of the page. And of course we have, um, we incorporated a reading time which helps with um, reader engagement. And um, the last feature was to, um, we made the decision to incorporate comments for the blog through our existing customer feedback mechanism that uses Qualtrics. Um, so you can see that is this page helpful, up or down. It allows people to vote on the blog content and then they have the option after voting to provide um, a small piece of comment, uh, a small comment about the article. It's not like a standard comment structure, but um, this is what the rest of the site is using and it makes more sense for us to monitor everything together. So we, again, just wanted to align it with what we were doing for the rest of the site. Okay, so once we got those design mockups, we started by creating the content type and also doing the uh, translation of the design into Drupal templates. And we also started working on the migration mapping because we wanted to retire the legacy system that required us to migrate the content. And so what you see here is one of those uh, mappings. And then if you go to the next slide, you will see this is a sample export from Roller. In Roller, there is the, all of the post content that's stored in a single view. And so we needed a tiny ETL pipeline to put that, parse it, and put it into a structure that we could easily migrate into. And then we put a CSV of this content in a shared uh, spreadsheet so that the content authors could take the first stab at content remediation. So if we go to the next slide, you see here, they went in and they filled in uh, data that did not exist for the old post because it's required in the new structure and also correcting some things that were missed by the automation process. And then, 
Yeah, so um, the other um, way we um, address content remediation is um, just the fact of we, we need to migrate over existing blog articles. Um, we have over a thousand past blog articles, but um, we didn't want to have to go through each individual article and remediate each one. So we made a business decision to only republish the last two years, which was about 60 entries. Um, Everything is in Drupal and available for us to publish at any time, but we only reviewed and manually checked those 60 entries. Um, we also use this as a way to train the blog authors on the new system. Um, Drupal has a lot of advanced features. Um, this blog type uses paragraphs, um, so we, you know, and it, they have the ability to add in pull quotes or extra images in a way that Roller wasn't able to do. So um, by having the blog authors go through each one of these entries um, to kind of look at it, check it over, make sure it, it, was, um, it, looked uh, it was ready for publication, um, they were learning the system as they were doing this. So they, they went through each one individually, kind of cleared it for publication, and then when we were ready to launch, they were all ready to go, and they kind of switched on automatically. We, we put in the redirect, and then um, magically all 60 blogs uh, appeared live on the set. Okay, so sharing knowledge. We have a weekly join call between the intranet and the public teams where we talk about the work that's being done in each of those products. And so for the blog, we've been sharing with them everything that we've been doing to marry the public side so they have visibility over the kind of things that they would expect. And most importantly, we're sharing people. And so the designer who did the public blog was also the same designer that's going to work on the intranet. The UI developer who did the translation on the public was also the same person who's doing that. And so they're taking that knowledge with them, and that there's this added efficiency by being able to do that. Not only that, they are able to teach the other team the lessons learned. And so that's what we did, and by the time that they're, and when they had questions in our group, when they started implementing the landing page and archive page, um, there were questions that came up and we were able to answer that for them because we faced it when we first did the public side. Okay, so getting into the internal side of things, uh, the first thing to keep in mind is that we followed the same design process. So I won't go into the details of the design process because you just heard it. We even used the same UX resource. Um, so when she was done focusing on the public side of things, she just switched gears to focus internally. And I hope, I think it was uh, a little easier for her to do that back to back rather than having to wait, let time go by um, before jumping into the PTO website. So that said, I want to focus on a few different design decisions that we made um, because we were building for internal uh, instead of external. So. Here is our landing page for the blog. Um, we actually have it double as our archive page. So every time a blog is posted, it automatically shows up on this page. Uh, and we've added some filters, um, yeah, filters for employees. So they can filter by um, most recent, most viewed, um, the topic, and actually these topics uh, here is another way that we overlapped with the public side. So we chose the same categories that they can, um, well, the same topics that they can categorize things. Uh, on the public side, we chose those same topics internally as well. And they can, and employees can also filter by keyword. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is doubling as our archive. So the default is having it sorted by the date, by most recent. So that if you were to scroll down on this page, you would just see the list of the blog posts. And then keeping in mind that we wanted employee engagement to be top of mind, we've added the amount of time it takes to read, the amount of views that a blog has gotten so far, and the amount of comments um, that it's received. So we have that those metrics right underneath the title so people can see that right away before clicking into the blog. And then if you were to click in, this is our individual blog post page. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've been migrating things into Drupal, right? We've been building new content types. And so one of the things we wanted to do with this, with the director's corner, was keep some consistency between the other content types that we've built. So the first is in that top right corner, uh, we have a share section where you can share by email, Teams, print PDF, or copy the link. Uh, that's something that we've had on all of our new content types. So we wanted to make sure to bring that in. Uh, similarly, we 
offer the most recent, I think it's four, four most recent posts. Um, that's something that we're doing on our many of our other content types too, so we wanted to keep that in mind. So that helped um, with the design too. And then again, employee engagement. So we have that, those metrics that I mentioned before at the top and also the ability to click and read more about the author. So if we were to click Kathy Vidal's name, it would go to a bio page and employees could learn more about who's writing it um, and any other authors too. So we can have more than one blog author. And then um, at the very bottom, so the next part, this is the bottom of a blog post. Um, this is what I'm pretty excited about. We offered um, comments. So employees can actually submit comments for review. Um, and I'm happy to go into more detail about how like our comment moderation is and what our comment guidelines, if that's of interest and if there's time at the end. Uh, but I can speak more about that. But we default to show the amount of comments on the bottom. Um, if there were none, it would say be the first to submit a comment. And then if they clicked show comments, it would expand to have the form to submit. And uh, we've given the choice to comment anonymously or identify, right? Um, and then when they submit, everything gets reviewed. So I do at least want to mention that, that we're not letting employees just post whatever they want with no review. Everything, every comment is read before uh, it's approved to publish. So keeping that in mind too. Um, so we comment anonymously, and then these are what the comments actually look like. So want to point out that eight, the all comments eight, might not seem like a high number, but it is very high to us. Um, we have not had that um, number of comments uh, in the whole time that I've been there. So, the, and this was the first blog that we posted in Drupal. So it's nice to see that it's actually being utilized. Um, and same with the, there's a, a thumbs up there where you can like comments, um, same deal. I did not click this 30 times or 21 times, like other people actually did that. So it's nice to see <laughs> Uh, it being used, and that's another way that we're trying to have that employee engagement. So not only uh, engaging with the author, between the author and employees, but also employee to employee. Um, so we've mentioned we're sharing resources and how teams made different decisions, right? There are times when, even though we're two teams that are focused on similar things, right, web, even one external, one internal, there are times when decisions don't align. and so. Comments is a good example of that. The, and I think Henoch might have mentioned this earlier, that the public side, um, they had actually started researching comments back in 2015 and decided recently that it was something they were not going to do. Um, when I came along and said, well, and actually when the comms leadership said, you know, we definitely want to increase employee engagement, comments is a way we want to do that. When I said that to the development team, there was some hesitation because a lot of those people are also on the public website team and they just went through the whole round of, no, we're not doing comments, here's why, this isn't going to happen. So through some back and forth, we, you know, I, we checked with cybersecurity, we came up with the moderation workflow, we found a way to make it work for the internal side, recognizing that the opposite outcome was okay on the public side too. So, just keeping that in mind that even when you overlap and even when you have common high level goals in mind, it might require that some tinier things um, are decided differently and that is completely okay. Leading into our key takeaways. All right. So our shared resource is a good thing. I think in the federal government, it's just a way of life. You're always going to have a limited budget and you um, use what you're given. Um, so that being said, um, when you do have shared resources, allowing those resources to devote 100% of their time on one project is really key. We saw an increased efficiency and less stress. Just again, letting them to really focus in one thing at a time, it's just easier and it actually moves the projects forward at a faster pace. Um, another thing that we do um, within the comms department is have quarterly syncs between the teams. Um, so Lauren and I would meet with the technical leads once a quarter and we talk about what our roadmap is, what's coming up, um, what's coming up and what could potentially need those shared resources. Before PTO Web got additional UX resources, big topic of conversation was always like, what's the UX designer going to be doing? When can I, when can we like get some of her time? So again, like we, we had a very cordial meeting. Uh, we all know that we are working towards the same communication strategy 
And so that also helps. Um, when, there, when we do have um, competing priorities that are both urgent, we can go to our leadership and we can say, hey, these are both really high priority things. What comes first? So we can turn to our supervisors, our bosses. We can look at that shared communication strategy and help determine what actually gets prioritized between the team. So again, I'd say very cordial, no fighting. Um, you know, again, it's I, I think it's it's just it's it's a much nicer way to work. Mm -hmm. So a few recommendations for if you find yourself in a similar situation or you want to be in a similar situation in the future. Um, be willing to share between teams, even the tiny things that you're working on. So not only the code, but also the fact that a new enhancement is coming. It's really helpful. Um, there are, and even if it seems like not a big deal to you, it might spark something big on a similar team. So like there are times where Teresa has implemented something very cool on the public website, and I will add that to the backlog um, for PTO web. And so it's just good to know, and I'm sure vice versa, but it's good to know that that's, um, that other things are happening like that. And then try to align similar work to happen at the same time. So I think I had mentioned earlier where uh, our roadmap might have to change based on resource availability. So the director's corner for PTO Web uh, was something that was on our roadmap, but, but later. It wasn't something that needed to happen at this time, but when we heard that the public side was taking it on this year, uh, we moved it up so that it could happen closer to the same time for PTO Web and so that it was easier for the shared resources to continue kind of keeping that same focus. Um, and I think it did help us get it out on the internal side a lot faster than if we had let time go in between. Um, with content remediation, what Hanak and Teresa were talking about, trade off, think about what you can trade off, um, what you can do like automated uh, versus what you do manually. So they had mentioned that um, not every field is automatically merged into Drupal and there were some things that needed to happen manually. Keep in mind what you can do uh, automatically and what needs to actually have that manual time. Um, and then last but not least, it's always, there's always room to continuously improve. It's never a final product. Um, you can constantly keep adding things to your work. So that's something that I think we've done a good job is keeping that mindset. You know, comments again as an example, we're not allowing replies right now or tagging people in it. It's just a comment, right? That's a base level and if we wanted to grow from there, we could. That would be an example of continuous improvement. And also if, you know, if the public side ever did want to do anything related to comments, not that they would, but that's just an example. Um, they would know kind of where to start or how moderation might work or within Drupal. And so there's always room to improve based on what the other team is doing. So all that to say, sharing is good. Uh, obviously share code, share ideas. But sharing people has to be emphasized from leadership. And if you can find the right configuration, we've seen that it increases velocity for everybody. In the last four years, PTO Web has launched on Drupal 9 migrated to Drupal 10. The public side has migrated to Drupal 10 on a new design system. They were both migrated to the cloud. Right? This is just to name a few. A lot of work was done. And I've been supporting uh, PTO web, different projects at PTO over the last decade. And this is the most work I've seen get completed. And this idea of uh, sharing and openness I think, embodies the spirit of open source on which Drupal and so many of the other tools, tools that we use thrive. Was that? Thank you for coming to our talk. Uh, we'll open it up to questions. Any questions? Yes. Yes. How much of your budget was used for the scripted or dynamic migration into Drupal? So, so it probably took a couple of sprints. We have a two-week sprint. Right. And so we would go back and forth. Um, and I think it was about two sprints to actually do that, if you put it together. Because we did the plugins, and we did the migration into the spreadsheet. We wait for the uh, remediation to happen, and then we go back to merge those two and put it together. Yes? Yeah, you mentioned you all only publish the uh, repos, I guess, a very small subset of, uh, of blogs. I'm curious, I guess, did you all run into, uh, in making that decision, did you all get any pushback on that? Or, and if you did, I guess, how did you overcome and maybe convince you know, your wider audience that it was better to just publish that, keep that smaller subset, et cetera? 
Absolutely. So the question was, um, you know, how did we make that decision to only republish two years? Um, we actually sent that to the blog stakeholders, and we said, all right, here's all of your, you know, here's all the blogs in Drupal. How much do you, does your team want to manually go in and remediate? <laughs> and, and we kind of, we, we kind of turned that over to the, the blog authoring group. We have some uh, we, we have some standards on how long content stays on the website. So at the bare minimum, seven years could have been pushed out um, within our current policy. But um, you know that was sort of on the blog um, the blog SMEs to um, you know they, they were like you know what no we don't need seven years let's go back and and they actually made the decision to go back to the existing leadership. So um, Kath, uh, director Kathy Vidal. Um, she came on about two years ago, so we said let's republish everything from her um, her directorship onward. Yes. Is there anything you would have done differently in the process, especially around like, the design requirements gathering phase? I don't know. I mean, I really am jealous of PTO Web's archive landing page combination. I'm like, oh wow, that would have been that, that's really cool. But you know, it's. Um, um, uh, this was um, having the UX resource focus um, and also work separately from the development team. Um, this was the first time we tried it. Um, you know, a lot of things were stalled because you know I didn't have a lot of time as a product owner to kind of do that research. And so, uh, being able to delegate out and be like, all right, you go off and you do you do the in depth research and come back and report back to me. Um, that has really helped. And um, we're, we're actually implementing that on other projects currently too. So um, I, I think that's, you know, I, 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 we were really happy with um, how this rolled out, which is why we wanted to present today too. There, I have a comment on that for the internal side. I think from the like, stakeholder perspective, the, the comms people who are the ones authoring or putting the blogs into Drupal and that side, uh, we had to do a little bit of the, a repetitive research phase with them when we decided that PTO Web was also going to take it on at this time. And I think it would have been nice to not have them have to explain their needs twice, like if we had been able to do that at the same time, because it was the same people that are dealing with the blogs for the external and internal. So that's like the one thing that I would have maybe changed, but again, part of flexibility and adjusting items on your roadmap, like you don't always know that you're gonna be working on things at that time. Any other questions? All right, thank you so much. Thank you.